Okay, so now we're going to get to part three of Was Paul Con to Think Satan Was Jesus Talking Three Times? Acts 21, verses 17 to 21, and we'll start on the next uh, article, and we're going to break it down from there. Okay, we have an article that's entitled, Odd Message from Jesus to Paul About Apostles. And I have to tell you, this to me is the most convincing of all. I mean, the, the uh, episodes with... Paul out in the desert, you know, there's all kinds of contradictions between him and the witnesses and so on, and Jesus wasn't going to appear in the wilderness, and even though the Bible verses run on point, this is where you know this cannot be the true Jesus Christ. Cannot. I mean, of course, the last one on the demon possession, being left alone, we know that can't be Jesus either, but this one convinces me beyond doubt this can't be the real Jesus that he's meeting. So we need to set it up. So this is immediately after Paul has had his Damascus Road experience in, in Damascus. But now he's 70 miles away from Jerusalem. So now he wants to rush to Jerusalem to see the apostles. He wants to apologize to them about the, the being involved in the murder of um, Stephen. And he's going to express this to his Jesus in this vision he's having with him. He's going to tell him, you know, I came here to see them and and I, you know, I persecuted and abused them. He obviously wants to, to apologize to them. So he's rushed all the way here. And if you check on the distance, the total distance from Damascus um, Damascus to Jerusalem is 176 miles. I did a little tr thing on Google Maps and it figured out it would take him two weeks to walk this unless he had a horse or something to help him go faster. Um, and, and when he gets there, he's going to be told by Jesus to leave immediately. The, 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 the apostles are not going to believe you ever met me, so just, just leave. And you've got to see the plaintiff, you know, the sorrow of Paul. He says, I, I, you know, I've come here all the way to talk to these people, and Jesus is going to tell them to leave. And I'm going to show you why this can't be Jesus, okay? But let's let's go. And I just want to give you the highlights of what's happening here, so you don't have to uh, be waiting to think, what what is this all about? Um, so the other thing is you need to know that in chronological time, the appearance on the road to Damascus of Jesus to Paul is chronologically at the same point of Acts chapter 9. So he's just repeating this story to, to he's in a court setting or, or he's been arrested or seized, whatever the, you want to call it, at the temple. And he's asking the guard, the Roman guard, can I talk to the people and express what's gone on here? And he's going to tell over again the story of Damascus experience outside Damascus where he saw the vision and the light and all that. So why is that important? Because we know in Acts 8, 1 that the apostles were staying in Jerusalem and the other people had fled due to what had happened to Stephen in chapter, uh, at the end of chapter 7 of Acts. So this is this is in that very moment where the one people who are staying in Jerusalem are the apostles, and you know everybody else is kind of frightened because of what Paul had been doing. So he really should come and apologize to the apostles and and reconcile somehow, you know, make up. And the apostles aren't going to kill Paul, right? He, they're they're peace loving people. They're not going to stab and shoot him or something or or uh, do something to him. Okay. Um, and then uh, Paul is going to get up and give a recounting of this same appearance in Acts 22 to hundreds of people, literally. Um, and, um, you know, right there at Jerusalem are the apostles when he's even saying this. And all he has to do, uh, you know, is go see them. But he, before he goes see them, and they're, on the, they're sitting every day teaching on a portico in um, a King Solomon's porch. So it's right outside the temple entrance where people pray. So he's like 20, he's going to go in the temple to pray, and he's only like 25 yards from them. If he just goes out and turns around and looks for them, they're going to be right there. John, Peter, and, and, and uh, James, the brother of Jesus, they're all there, and he can go meet them and apologize and everything. Okay? So why would our Jesus tell Paul not to go see them? Let's, let's now go look at it. So the other interesting thing is Paul calls this a trance, which in the Greek is ex ecstasy, a little oddity in this story. In this trance, Paul heard that Jesus Paul just recently met speak. Paul's first response was to think the Twelve can believe he met Jesus, and he wants Jesus to, to, to let him go and see him, because he can convince them. But Paul, Jesus, strangely says, no, the plan is not to get the Twelve's acceptance. 
that Paul met the true Jesus. Instead, Paul's 126-mile walk back to Jerusalem was unnecessary because Jesus is, Paul's Jesus will send Paul not to the Jews of Israel, but to the Gentiles, like in Syria, where Paul just walked from. So, so you have to wonder, if this is a real Jesus, and he knew this was all going to happen, why did he let him walk all the way here to just send him all the way back out? Kind of, kind of not very prescient for somebody who's up in heaven with God. Uh, why didn't Paul's Jesus speak up earlier and avoid the unnecessary travel? Did the true God keep Paul's at Damascus Jesus' mouth shut so that Paul could ask the hard questions we are asking 2,000 years later? Do you think that if God wanted to help Saul, is he would he would tell this? Let's let's assume just for our argument's sake that this Jesus is really Satan or an angel of Satan. You think maybe God will put some little bit of a protection on Paul? I mean, say, hey, look, you know, let's not be unfair here. Let's let's tell him, uh, uh, y- y- you know, um, y- you can't help him. You can't talk to him during the during the walk. Let him go the whole walk. And that way, if you ever tell him to leave, he's going to think you're a fraud because, you know, the real Jesus would have said, no, sure, I'll go talk to the apostles. I'll, if I could appear to you, Paul, and I can talk to you in a trance, I can do the same with them, right? So but, so Paul, you know, could put it all together and realize, you know, it, that this isn't the real Jesus. He, he, the real Jesus could go talk to them, but this one's going to tell him I can't talk to them. They won't believe me. I'm Jesus and they won't believe me. That's, that's what it comes down to. So let's hear it. You're going to hear it from the horse's mouth, Paul speaking. And this is Paul speaking. He's giving a recounting beginning in verse 17 all the way through 21. And it came to pass that when I had returned to Jerusalem, so he's in Damascus, he's coming back. While I prayed in the temple, private place, I fell in a trance, ecstasy, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, because they will not receive of thee testimony concerning me. Who won't receive testimony? The apostles, the only people there who he who had who have not run away. Verse nineteen. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that I imprisoned and beat in every synagogue them that believe on you. So what is he saying this for? He wants to apologize. He wants to go talk to them. Verse twenty. And when the blood of Stephen thy witness was shed, I also was standing by and consenting and keeping the garments of them that slew him. So don't look at the next verse yet. What would the real Jews Jesus do here? He'd say, well, of course, Paul, I'll tell you what, if you're afraid of them, I'm assuring you they're not going to hurt you. They're my followers. But if you're afraid, I'll go talk to them right now, just as I'm talking to you. Now, of course, Jesus can't do that. The real Jesus can't do that because Jesus said, I won't appear on earth again until I come back in the second coming when everybody sees me. But Jesus, but Paul doesn't know about this verse because he hasn't actually met the apostles yet, right? He doesn't know that Jesus said this, so he is unable to protect himself from whoever this is, who is not the Lord Jesus Christ. So, let's go on. Does it not sound very odd that Paul was told by the supposedly true Jesus that his twelve apostles would not accept Paul? And instead of going to visit them and be received by them through the through the Holy Spirit message of Jesus to them, that instead Paul should leave Jerusalem? They will reject Paul, met the true Jesus, so don't bother with the apostles at Jerusalem in effect is what this Jesus said. Does that sound like what the true Jesus would say or what a false Jesus would say who could not dupe the true 12? And why would the true Jesus let Paul travel to Jerusalem over a two-week walk and when Paul arrives, Jesus, so his Jesus tells him, Paul, essentially go back down to the Gentile lands like Syria, Syria and preach to them. So this is why we can be 100% certain this is not the true Jesus for all the above reasons. And let me, be, let me also say this, to be absolutely clear, the true Jesus no doubt would want Paul to obtain the apostles' consent and help Paul use Jesus' gospel words heard by the true 12 to, Paul, to validate Paul's experience. That would be the first thing they'd sit down. You know, Paul, we've had a lot of time with Jesus and he's given us warnings about false Christ and all this kind of stuff. We're glad you're a believer now. But it's possible that you are actually being misled by somebody because Jesus told us that even if we were elect, even if we were Christians, we could be deceived by false Christ. So, you know, what? this doesn't really sound quite like what you should have had. Jesus told us he wasn't going to appear to us in private places. OK, you know, that's not how it works. So, you know, maybe we can help you out here and tell us the whole story. That's what the, the real apostles would have said. But he never gave Paul never 
gave them the chance, although he wanted to, but his Jesus interfered with what was a good and wholesome thing. Is the real Jesus going to do that, my friend? No, this is not the real Jesus, and there's no way you can change the record. This is the record of history written by Paul, written by Luke, who's, who's friendly to Paul. You can't say he's trying to make him look bad, but you kind of wonder, you know, what's going on here. So I think this is uh, enough said here. Uh, clearly, this is not Jesus. So we have two examples. The first one was 12, Second uh, Corinthians 12, verse 7. Jesus doesn't release him from, his Jesus doesn't release him from a demonic control of an angel of Satan, a hierarchy, a vi- very high up there satanic agent, because it's going to keep him humble, like Satan wants to help Paul be you, humble. I mean, just the incongruity of that sh- escaped Paul. Now, this second story that we were now going over, this is even crazier that he doesn't see through it, that this is a preposterous. This Jesus is afraid that Paul's going to get hurt somehow, or he, he can't convince them, can't appear to them in a vision, appear to them in a trance, appear to them in the light in the sky, you know, visit them at night when they're all together praying. I mean, this Jesus can't communicate to them. Is Paul dense? He's denser than stone, which tells me, this is why I believe Paul had the experience. This is such an idiotic story. This is the stupidest thing you would tell people if you wanted them to take you seriously because nobody can. How Christians have been looking at this verse for 2,000 years and didn't see this, I don't understand. <laughs> it is stupid. Nobody can believe this story. Not that Paul's lying. It's like you can't believe anybody could be this stupid. How Paul could be this dumb not to know this could not be the Lord Jesus. And just start over and say, you know what? I don't know who that guy was. I would have actually walked out of there and said to myself, you know what? I got to escape whoever this is. I got to go talk to the apostles. I got to tell them, you know, I think uh, some fraudsters trying to tr- play a trick on me, but I really, really don't want to hurt you guys anymore. So I'm on your side. That's what he should have done. But this, this story he's telling to a crowd of people as if this is something he should be proud about. This is something he should have thought about twice like this. Am I, does this story make any sense? It makes no sense. So this is why this to me is the most conclusive of all facts in the entire New Testament that puts Paul in his place of being what? A dupe. He never knew the Lord Jesus. And notice he never, ever, ever quotes the Lord Jesus teaching him anything in any of his epistles. Never says, hey, you know, I got this message from Jesus about Romans. Let me tell you what he said. Nope. Or how about in Thessalonians? Uh, here's a message from Jesus. Nope. How about uh, Galatians from Jesus? Nope. You can go over each and every epistle and you will never see the name of Jesus in front of a quotation. How about that? Not once. Not once. He never quotes the Lord Jesus for anything new in a revelation. Of course, he explained here he was under orders not to say anything. Uh, I mean, that was in the last one in in, uh, 2 Corinthians 12. So it's beyond doubt. But now the next thing we'll do is we'll go look at the the Damascus Road experience. And that's got its own set of unique problems that really uh, are mystifying. I'll just give you a heads up. His Jesus is quoting pagan plays about a Dionysius uh, who's walking the earth as a son of God. I mean, would the true Jesus quote Dionysius? Give me a break. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to show you in the next episode of this series, and it will be a blockbuster. If you thought these first two were pretty strong, wait till you see the third one. Ciao. Take care. God bless everybody.